Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. Alan Travers told about it in a Transworld Radio publication. You see, he was ministering in a church which had been infiltrated by communist agents. They reported everything that was said and done. He wrote, One of the men in the church was pointed out to me as being the government spy who would report to the police the next day everything that was said in church that morning. I was not surprised, he said, that there was such an informer there. But what did surprise me was that during the morning prayer session, this man stood up and prayed and the congregation joined in with him. Do you have the picture? The spy was actually a member of the church and a family man. So every Monday morning, he would go to the local police and rat it on his fellow Christians. The people knew he was an informer. They also knew that what he was doing compromised every one of them. How could you love and accept such a person? Why not expose him as a traitor and throw him out of the church? No wonder Travers was puzzled. In my amazement, he wrote, I asked why he was so well accepted by fellow believers. And the response was, None of us knows what we would have done in the same circumstances, and so we just continue to love him. There is no human logic in forgiveness. It transcends the mentality of our old natures that say, do it to the one who hurt you just like he did it to you. We live in a broken, sinful world. Our failures and our wrongs become wedges that separate us they turn love to bitterness and hatred. In the natural, there are plenty of reasons to hate, very few to forgive. Hatred creates separation, but forgiveness brings healing and restoration. A 12-year-old girl living in Shanghai overheard her parents talking about an uncle who had stolen most of the inheritance which should have come to the father. One day she said, Mother, Jesus said that if someone wants to take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. Now, we are Christians, and even if uncle has taken our portion, we should not talk badly about him. The mother was touched by what she said, and through this child, God spoke to her heart. A few years later, the uncle was diagnosed with cancer of the stomach. The Christian family went to visit, encouraging him to let Jesus Christ come into his life. What happened? Before he died, both he and his family came to faith in Christ. You see, it was Jesus Christ who provided the model for forgiveness. And he also makes it clear that our individual personal sins against him are greater than that anyone can perpetrate against us. Because of that, he taught us we have no right not to forgive others. When General James Edward Oglethorpe once told John Wesley, I never forgive, Wesley replied, Then I hope, sir, that you will never sin, because sooner or later every person needs to be forgiven. When the disciples came to Jesus and asked him to teach them to pray, he gave them the prayer that we call the Lord's Prayer. In this, Jesus stressed the importance of forgiving even your enemies as God forgives us. Now this disturbed the disciples, and Jesus read that on their faces, for he immediately added, For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. He who refuses to forgive burns the bridge over which he himself must someday cross. Think about it. You've just heard Dr. Harold Sala with Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. If you would like to listen to the program again, download a copy, subscribe to our e-commentary, or view other resources, visit guidelines.org. We would like to hear from you, too. You can email us at info at guidelines.org. That's info at guidelines.org. Thanks for listening, and we invite you to join us again for the next edition of Guidelines.